Hi, so I'm Jim Goff from the London Java community. I'm going to introduce the Java 8 date time API. So just briefly going to go through what Adopt.JSR is and why I was involved in this in the first place. Um, we'll discuss what's already in Java 7. Then we'll look at some new things, uh, what, how you work with date time, some parsing and formatting examples, how you can interoperate with Java util.date, and then we'll look at some advanced queries as well. Um, I'm part of the JCP group on the LJC that was elected onto the JCP committee around three years ago now. Uh, the JCP is a mechanism for standardizing technical specifications for Java, so this is one, of the, this is one uh, implementation that's gone through the JCP process to, to reach its final state. Uh, we launched an initiative called Adopt JSR, uh, and this was the pilot for Adopt JSR. Um, the program generally is to encourage members of the Java community to get involved with JSRs. Uh, it's also to evangelize JSRs to the wider community in order to uh, increase participation. And you can find the project on java.net. So Java date is in the language right since the beginning of, of launch of Java. And you know what? There's many good discussions about what was wrong with the current implementation that you can go away and take a look at. Um, some of those is, you know, the things, things are mutable. Uh, date is actually really a date time. And there are also other classes for SQL. So there's a mixture of date times, dates for SQL, times for SQL. Uh, there's no time zone support, and it's, it's not e easy to use. Things got a little bit better when we moved to calendar, uh, but you still had to, it was still mutable. Uh, you couldn't format date directly, and you know performing arithmetic operations in terms of how humans would specify things uh, in terms of something is two months away from now wasn't uh, wasn't clear or it's, it's it's quite tricky to get that correct. So Stephen, I've got a bit of a question for you here, which is an example from uh, Java One in two thousand eight. How many bugs can you find in this date time code? How many bugs? I'm uh, bearing in mind it's only a few lines. OK, well, I, if I could remember the constructor for the date, <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably would be able to find a bug in that. Um, but offhand, I can't remember the order of the parameters. That's cool. So I'll skip on and, and show you that there's actually six bugs in this code. I'm um, surprised, yes. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like on the face of it, it's quite a, um, quite a logical thing to do. But you know, in, this, in this date constructor here, you've got 2007. Actually, the, the way that date constructor works is it's an offset from the year 1900. So this would be 1900 plus 2007 to get, to get the date. Um, this is actually the, the month here as well, in, is 12. Um, in date constructor, that was zero indexed. So that would actually be an invalid month. It'd be out of range. Uh, 11 is how you specify December. In terms of time zone, got dot get time zone, this is actually uh, not the ISO specification of a time zone. It's got an arbitrary underscore in there as well, just to split things up. Uh, you've got a new Gregorian calendar here. You can't actually create a new Gregorian calendar. You have to use the instance methods on there. Uh, which makes it very difficult to sort of unit test and, and to mock out. And then you can't format directly a calendar object. You have to convert it to a date and then format it. Yeah. So this is just an example of a few things that are tripping people up consistently. So we're going to go through the basics. Uh, there's a new package in Java 8 called java.time. And we now have proper objects for representing date and time separately and together. Um, so a local date is just a date that doesn't have any time attached to it. It's simply a 29th of the 9th, 1984, which is my birthday. Um, a local time is just a time, 13.32. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't have a time zone attached to it, and it's just, just a time. A local date time is actually a combination of local date and local time. Uh, and a zone date time actually starts to bring time zones into, into the mix as well. So let's skip to the IDE. I've got a few examples here that we'll, we'll go through. I've got some unit tests here to sanity check that what I show you is, is, is the truth. Um, so how do you create a new local date? You, the first thing I did when I picked up this was go new local date. Um, actually, that's, that's not allowed. Um, everything that we use in, in Java date time is, is based on factory methods. So if we, we'd actually do this, um, local date of, it's uh, very convenient. It's got like what you'd expect. You've got year, month, and a day of month that you'd specify. Uh, and you'll notice that you can actually spe specify the month as an integer or as a, uh, an enum month. 
So in this example, we're going to do Henry VIII's birthday. So that was uh, the year 1491. Uh, the month was June. And the day was the 28th. So that gives me a very easy local date. Um, not specifying anything else that can now be used in code and, and understood quite, quite simply. So what about uh, local time? Well, again, you'll see that a lot of the constructors for making these things are consistent. So we're using of again. And this time, I'm just going to use 13.51, um, which is, again, you've got hour and minute, hour, minute, and second, or hour, minute, second, and nanosecond. So this is an additional level of accuracy that's being introduced into the uh, free 10 API set uh, nanos. So we're just going to specify 13.51. We don't need to go down to accuracy. Uh, so now, what about a uh, date time? So again, so be, to be repetitive, but this is actually um, this is quite nice when you when you get it. Uh, IDE as well is quite nice for the autocomplete. Everything's sort of named nicely. So here we're just going to do a combination of the above. So you'll see that you can go pretty much left to right, and things increase in terms of their accuracy. So we can use 1491 month dot June 28 1351, and we find out that I'm not using that properly. Um, and then actually, well, would you want to specify that if you've got this stuff? Um, you can actually do a local date time from, actually, do I mean from? I'll just switch from, I still mean of. Uh, and we could just do here, get Henry's birthday and get sample uh, local time. So that's another way that you could just combine them. So, th so the of method really is how you would go about creating a, a date time. So what if you've got a local date time and you want to convert it to a local date? So if, you, if we do this, uh, let's just create a local date time. And then we could do this now. So this is really simply how you just get well, what is right now. Um, and then we could just do here to local date. So you've got the conversions here so you can convert things through to uh, easily convert between the two different types. And we'll go into some more of these in a bit, but to local date we will work for now. So here I want to get the difference between um, a zoned time in Paris and London. So we could do a zoned date. Kind of I can get so zoned date time, and again we can use of. Um, actually, let's use now and then do with. And this is where I'm rusty. So I'm going to use my autocomplete to take a look through. Uh, what have we got on here? So this would be a nice time to actually go through what we have. So with is a temporal adjuster, and we'll go through that in a short while because it's a bit of an advanced concept. Uh, we've got until, so you can measure time periods as well. Um, and what I actually want to do with this is find a way to use my zone. Uh, how is it actually in this now method? Hold on. OK, this is where I skipped to my notes because I forgot. <laughs> ah, yeah, OK. So let's do Paris. This is what I was looking for. Uh, and here I could just specify my zone. So going back to what we had um, previously, you specify it in the ISO format. So we've got Europe slash Paris. Uh, and then we'll do the same for London. I'm going to cheat and just copy and paste that. And switch this around. So we've got London. And London here. So now we'll just find the difference between Paris and London. We could do just Paris minus London. Cool. Let's just run those unit tests and make sure that I haven't done anything silly. Ah, I have because it doesn't compile. So here I just really want to find the hour. So I could do get hour. And these get methods are really convenient on these uh, objects. You've got pretty much you can get absolutely anything off there. It makes it very easy to read what you're, what you're trying to do. So if we just rerun those tests with hopefully the code compiling this time, um, we should see that they're, they're all green. Phew. OK, so let's just uh, switch back to the slides. Um, because now I want to talk about working with date and time. So I've just basically gone through some very simple 
uh, bits and pieces. You know, that's how you're going to create date times from from now on in the new in Java rate if you choose to use them. Um, and in, so we've got to call, talk for about instant, duration, and period. So an instant is actually probably the closest thing to java.util.date. When you do a new date, you get effectively a millisecond value of where you are from 1970 from the epoch. An instant is exactly the same thing. It's just a point in time on the timeline. Um, a duration is a measure of time. So you could take one instant to another instant and say that's 34.5 seconds. Um, so that's just purely time-based. Uh, and a period is different because it's a it's kind of it's based on like what we would perceive as humans. So we'd say we'd be unlikely to say um, five days time to someone. I'll meet you at the pub in five days time is probably a reasonable thing to say as opposed to x number of milliseconds from now. So this kind of period stuff gets, allows us to interact uh, a bit easier with the API. It's also the difference is quite subtle uh, but important when working with zone date time operations. So period will use um, details within the chronology that you're using and for most people that will be the ISO chronology uh, which is the standard date, date time uh, calendaring system. Um, so if you put a, the same amount of five days in, in seconds and it was going over a time zone then you'd get, uh, sorry, going over a daylight saving then you might lose an hour whereas if you put a period that would resolve. Um, and java.util.a I actually mentioned it's close to instant and it, the, in Java 8 it's got a new method on it which uh, allows us to be compatible and it, you just use two instant on there uh, to convert that into an instant and then from there you can start using the, the new APIs. So I've got some second examples here which we'll start to explore just working with these. So I'm just going to run my unit test to check that everything fails and that we're all compiling, so start from something that we know is not completely well, is not is not uh, completely broken. Um, so let's just say it's today after tomorrow. Um, so we could create a local date um, today, and we'll just use uh, local date dot now for that. And then if we want to create a local date for tomorrow, then we could do the local date and specify um, the exact date for tomorrow. But we can actually do uh, today dot, and there's these convenient methods on here for plusing, minusing days, uh, months, and years. So in this case, we just want to plus um, plus one day on. So we could do this, and then we could to test if today is after tomorrow. We can then say um, we can check tomorrow is after today. So that's a bit a bit slightly the other way around of specifying things. You could also say. Um, today is before tomorrow. So these uh, operations that we were talking about, it, it allows you kind of easier access without having to go comparing millisecond values and say, is this, milli is this value in, in raw milliseconds less than this? Um, we could also use, so if we wanted to find the last day of the month, this is again something that can differ depending on like what month you're in. Uh, obviously February's got 28 days, others have 31 and 30. So we can use a temporal adjuster, and I, I mentioned this briefly when I was panicking earlier. So if you do a, let's just say we want to find the last, so the day of week in the month. So we do local date, we say now, and then we can say with. And then there's these temporal, it, the concept is a temporal adjuster, uh, and you can implement your own. But in this case, we've got a temporal adjusters, which actually gives us loads of handy things that you want to do with date time. Uh, so we just say last day of the month in there. Um, and now we've got our local date, we can actually just say um, get day of week. And that's just going to go to take, take the time now and then the with will move that date on and then the get day of week will get that date out. So now we're going to talk about the period uh, class that I was mentioning earlier. So how many days is it until the longest day of the year? So if we do our local date um, today and that's local date dot now um, and then if we do take our longest day and then we could do this of uh, well actually let's do let's do the um, let's take to today and adjust it so we can do today dot with and we can say with 
and do month dot June, and then we can say dot with day of month and do twenty first. Cool. So that's our longest day. And then what we could do here is we could do period dot between, and then we start date is today, and then we'll go for our longest day. So and from period we want to do get days. So you've also got on this period method, you know, you can we could actually say that we want to get the number of months, the years. Again, it's quite nice to you can see this stuff very quickly when you kind of hit the dot. Oh yeah, these are all the things that I could do with that. So in this case we want days. Now here I've got two uh, date time zones. I've got one for Los Angeles time zone and one for Europe London. And what I want to do is, is see in duration uh, how long is it until the new year. So I could do duration again dot between and say here and GMT new year. Okay, and just to, to round things off, if I wanted to, if I created a new date, this is the uh, old Java, um, Java 7 way of creating a date. And then we've got this to instant method that I was talking about. And then the thing to remember about uh, to instant is it's going to be in a particular time zone. Now, with that, you can do system default uh, if, you, if you don't care. If you did care, you could actually specify a time zone here. And then from here, you could do to local date. So this would be the standard way to convert to from java.util.date to local date. OK, so I'm just going to quickly run this up and make sure that we've only got this last test failing. I haven't done anything um, silly. Uh, what have I done with the test duration? So, ah, uh, yes. So this is one of my intentional um, issues that I've left in. You'll see here that what I've done is um, with this. This tends to happen sometimes with when you're trying to test date times. Now, um, you would say I've got a time now and I've got some time. I want to measure what happens between it. It might be you measuring some time for a trade to go through. Anything, whatever it happens to be. And actually what I'm doing here is, is wrong. I'm doing similar kind of thing as what I'm saying now and then in the future measure difference, but there's, I can never make this test work because it's always going to rely on the time it takes to execute. So what you can actually do is when we did the dot now uh, in, the, in, the, in the second example here um, to create this, you can actually specify a clock um, and the clock all methods would now take a clock. And the idea with that is that you can, you can put the system clock in there for a standard, um, for, this, for your actual main code. But then in your unit test, you can put a clock and you can fix the time to what you want. So you can actually start to mock the clock. And if you've got code that's that complex, then this is what you'd do. So for now, I'm not going to address that in this test. I'm just going to comment that out and cheat a little bit and, and move on to an example that's in a little bit more depth. So. What, what we're going to do now is we're going to try and find out, given uh, the months in the year, what are all the days, um, the last days of every month? So if I was, if I was writing this in, in Java 7, the first thing I'd be doing is, OK, I need to return a list. So I'm going to create my, my dummy list, and I'm going to say that that's a new array list. I can use my diamond operator. Uh, and what I say is, well, how can I iterate over the month? So I could do for month, month uh, in, and I could do month dot get value oh, dot values. Okay, and then what I need to do then is to take a local date and get it to the last day, and then get the day of the week. So I'm going to create my local date, and we'll just call it date for lack of a better variable name, and we'll do local date now. And we'll adjust, we'll, we'll adjust it to the year. So we'll take the year that's been passed into the method here. And we're going to take the, we're going to put the month in as well, which is the month that we're doing in our, in our for loop. And then we're going to use, um, I'll just put this onto the next line so it doesn't go flying off the edge. We're going to use with and use our temporal adjusters again, like we did in the example above, to get the last day of the month. And then we want to do uh, dot get day of week. So just to walk you through what's happening here, um, actually, that's a good point. That needs to be a day of week. I've, I've, I've gone too far. So what I've got is I've got my local date, and I'm just saying take one from now. 
um, adjust it to the year that we specified, give it the month, and then get the last day of the month and get the day of the week. So then standard here, we do list.add day. Everybody's happy, we return that list. So let's run that and make sure that there's no schoolboy errors. Okay, so we're looking good. But really, if we're starting to do things like this in Java 8, we've maybe not watched another video on how to do lambdas. So I'm going to just briefly discuss how I'd convert this into to a lambda expression. So let's just comment this and, and figure out what we're going to do here. So we've got this list and we're creating a new one and returning it. Or we can get around that with using streams to, to give us our data and just return the result out from, from there. So we, we basically have to do the iteration over. So we need to get the months. So same as we've done in the for loop. Um, we're going to need to apply basically a transformation to each item. And then we need to collect that into a list. OK, that, that's doable. So let's just comment this out for now, and we'll just keep it, we'll keep it here in case we get stuck. So let's say, so first of all, uh, we, we've got our month.values. So let's say there's a cool thing on streams, uh, if I can spell streams, probably a stream, yeah. So a cool thing on the stream API, which is just of. Now, if you're using collection, so if you've already got an array list, you can just do dot .stream. Uh, here, what we can do, because it's a primitive array, because it's an enum, we just do month dot values. So this now gives me a stream to play with, which is kind of cool. Uh, and here, what I'm going to do is kind of going, I need to apply transformation. Well, that sounds like a map operation to me. So I'm going to use a map on this. And it's a lambda expression, so what, what are we doing in each of these things? Um, well, we've effectively got a month. And to that month, we're going to apply effectively what we've got here. So let's just steal this code. So we're effectively going, separate this out so it's not too bad and remove the comment. So we've got local date not now, same thing, exactly the same thing as above. Um, and then finally, what we want to do then is dot collect. Now, so we've taken a stream, we've got our data coming through, which is 12 months, we've applied a transformation, and then we want to collect it to, um, and there's this cool thing called collectors, and this has some really useful uh, things to collect things into. Uh, we could just do dot collect to list. Cool. And obviously, we would just want to return that. So looking at the complexity, we've removed all this boilerplate. We've removed having to create an empty array list, having to have these for loops. We're really just thinking about the data here, which is exactly what Lambdas is in, intended uh, to do. So it's quite easy to just refactor that. And it, I think it's slightly more readable as well. And if we run this, hopefully we haven't made any errors. Yeah, I was a bit nervous when it went uh, orange there for a short time. But that's it, all tests passed. So I said a little bit more of how you can use, um, what I didn't mention was temporal adjuster uh, is a functional interface, which is why this stuff kind of works nicely as well. Um, cool, so we talked about java-util.date. Oh, parsing and formatting. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this um, just to show quickly the features of parsing and formatting. So you've got this uh, class called date time formatter, and it's just one thing that does so much. Um, but it's also got convenience method on it as well, because usually you don't care too much about the format unless you're receiving some file from somebody that you can't go and hit if they've got it in the wrong format. So here we've just got the nice defined preformatter ISO date. You can build a custom pattern, and I'll, I'll show a quick example of that. And all these, all the objects, like, like we could use local date of and local date time of, we've got a format and a parse. So let's look at that. So we've got our formatting examples here. Uh, we'll just run quickly the supporting unit test as well. And if they pass, we worry. They don't. Cool. So we just want to format a simple date. And we'll use today. So let's do local date dot now and then format. And we'll use the ISO date time formatter. So we just do date time formatter dot ISO. And that's it. Really nice. Same thing with if we want to specify a format, we can do now uh, dot format 
date, time formatter, and you can use this of, um, oops, it's got, it's got a bit carried away, uh, of pattern. And here I'm just going to grab this pattern that I've got here. So the example that I'm passing in is month, day, year, specified, I think that's the American style. Um, one thing just to note here with the, with the previous format, uh, date time formatters that we had, or the fo formats, uh, date format, is that some of these um, letters have been changed. And that's not to annoy people, it's to bring people in line, it's to bring the, the API in line with the, the standards that are out there for representing this. Um, so just be careful if you try to port code straight over from a previous uh, formatter. Uh, and then this one, we just got a local date again, and we can use a parse. And here, because I'm just using ISO again, I could just pass it a date string. And hopefully now, this just works. Yay. So this is, again, there's so much I could go into, but given time constraints, it's just worthwhile just showing these things. And uh, you can actually, if, if you're looking at this before Java 8 is launched, you could go and see the Java doc for this now, uh, download.java.net, I think it's on. And, and you could just have a, have a look, even if you, if you don't have time to have a play, and just be aware of what, what's coming up. Certainly is, make, makes life a lot easier. OK, um, I haven't got a slide for this, which is why that's just done that. I just wanted to talk about a few advanced examples. Um, so I landed in San Francisco on Monday. I was quite surprised that uh, it seemed like everybody was, t was too busy to do stuff. And it's because banks and schools are on holiday. Um, so I've written a few examples here to try and interact with the calendaring system for something that's not already specified. So two examples. We've got Martin Luther King Day, and we've got the um, quarter of a year. So in a lot of financial institutions, you need to know, is it quarter one, two, three, or four for reporting purposes? And, and that's not something that's provided out of the box. So I'll just quickly go through a quarter of a year. I don't have, um, I have tests for these, but I, I'm not going to sort of code them up. So you'll see here that we're doing a query. So this is basically us saying we could take a date and we could perform a query operation on it. And we can write that query to, to basically be whatever we want. I've got this new quarter of a year query here. Let's just put this down so we can see. Um, and all I do is you, you, it's got this, uh, it implements a temporal query interface and you can basically return whatever you want. So that's quite nice because if you wanted to return a list of something that, that was specific to your business logic or business domain, you can do that. You can specify pretty much anything. Well, you can. It's a generic. Um, and then here we've got so here I'm then overriding one method in here, which is query from. I'm expecting this to be a local date. It could be you could pass in a time. It'll be a local date from that temporal object. Um, and this is a t this tem the temporal concept is something that's kind of a bit lower level. It's what kind of premise the local date local time classes, which actually brings me on to a really good point. If you think about when you use array list, you normally use list on the left hand side and array list on the right hand side of the assignment. <coughs> Uh, with dates, you use the concrete classes, because um, otherwise you get into a world of hurt, and it's clearer, clearer what's going on as well. So first of all, I just take this, and then I go, OK, well, I'm going to write my logic now to, to say what this is. So I say now, which is just what this is, and I can just see my is before. Uh, and I take now, and I create the month of April, um, and I say with day of month one. Uh, and then that just is then returning um, It's the first quarter. It's the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. So I've added on to, I, I bolted onto the API something that's important to me, but if, if you didn't care about quarters of years, it would just be bloat to the, to the API, um, which you had to be careful with. Uh, and this one is, is, is to, to find the next Martin Luther King Day. It's um, done in the same kind of vein, it's, it's used but using the query. So I do, um, I take a local date and do from temporal again, so I've got a date. And then what I want to do is I take the current year Martin Luther King Day. So I get current year Martin Luther King Day. Uh, I pass a year. And then I say local date of that year, January the 1st. And then I say this is a cool day of week in month. So uh, you just do free in Monday. And that takes you straight, straight to the third Monday in the month. You could also, if you're a bit, if you didn't know what you were doing when you were writing this last week, uh, you can use something called next or same, uh, next or same day. And that means you can actually 
not know where you're landing in a calendar and say, if I'm on a Monday, don't go one further on. Um, and if I'm, on a, if I'm on any other day, then progress. So you can actually use that to logically iterate over days that are in a calendar, which you might want to do if you were going to go over something here and collate some data and pass it back. Um, and then what I do is I say, I use the period class again. So I say period dot between, I've got my date now, and when's the current Martin Luther King day? Now a period can be negative or it can be zero if, if you're on the day. And then there's these handy methods of is negative and is zero, just to say, you know, or, or there is positive as well. So you can use that to test without having to sort of use an integer comparison. Um, and here what I do is I say, okay, if, if, if it's negative or it's zero, so I'm on the day or before the day has passed, then I want to find Martin Luther King Day in the next year. So I just recall my method, uh, Martin Luther King Day in year, and just increment the year by one and then return it. Or otherwise it, it's where we're between the third Monday and the beginning of the year. So I just, I do that. Um, so that's all the code examples I've got. One of the things I wanted to mention, if you've got this far and are still listening, you might be like, okay, well, this is all really cool if you're using ISO date time, but what if you're using like a, another calendaring system or maybe I want to write my own calendaring system? Um, you can do that and it's all supported inside the API and actually Oracle provides a bunch of uh, calendars for internationalization out of the box. Um, so the nice, the, one of the, the hardest things about this API when people say, why, why has this taken so long? This, this is box standard stuff is to write an API that supports the majority of users that will be using ISO date time, but then also make it so it's, it's, it works and is workable for uh, bespoke calendaring systems. It actually takes quite a lot of thought and it takes a lot of trials to get that right. I think that's where, a lot, when people say, why is it taking so long? You can sit down and have a really long conversation about it in the pub until you drop off your seat. Uh, so that's all I have. Uh, thanks for listening.